portfolio. Fox Business brings you complete coronavirus coverage. As markets continue to react with extreme volatility, Fox Business shows you how to navigate the turmoil with instant analysis to help you make your next move. Plus, breaking reports from Washington to Main Street, keeping you on top of every development as it happens. Turn to Fox Business for the continuing coronavirus coverage every investor needs. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. For the best car wash at the best price, then go to the new Nips Car Wash, located at 459 Highway 301 South, down from McDonald's in Jessup. Nips Car Wash features state-of-the-art IQ automatic car wash system. Every car or truck that enters the automatic IQ wash system is scanned to capture its unique vehicle profile to give you a great car wash every time. Nips Car Wash also features two self-service bays where you can choose from a variety of accessories such as foam brush, tire brush, bug off, wax, clear coat, and spot-free rinse with powerful blowers located in each bay to top off your car wash experience at an affordable price. For the best quality car wash around, go to the new Nips Car Wash located down from McDonald's on the left on Highway 301 South in Jessup. That's Nips Car Wash with a state-of-the-art IQ automatic wash system on Highway 301 South down from McDonald's in Jessup. 758 here at the Big Dog WIFO FM World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply and Nips Car Wash. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Jonathan. Got a special guest in. Again, a lot of people want to know what's going to take place next week here in Wayne County as far as schooling goes, and no one's got the answers more than the man to my right. That's school <laughs> superintendent Jay Brinson. Jay, appreciate you coming in. Uh, a lot of questions, what all is taking place, uh, you know, unfortunate situation with the schools being shut down, but right. it is what it is, as they say. But I appreciate you coming in and letting people know what's going to take place next week here in Wayne County. Yeah, always always good to be with you guys. Um, I don't know how many answers I have. There are more questions than answers out there for sure. But uh, uh, just wanted to kind of let everyone know that we, are, we have kind of formalized what we're doing with our distance learning for the rest of the year. Obviously, we're not going back to, to our buildings for the rest of this school year. Um, and again, let me preface you know these comments with, you know, this is um, there's no playbook for this. Everybody's approaching this for, you know, in a, in a different way, and um, you know, we're in the business of educating children. Um, but in the in the grand scheme of things, it's really a small part, and that's that's something I want everybody to keep, to keep in mind. We're certainly going to do the best I can and best we can, and uh, you know, meet the. Uh, um, expectation in, in the job that we have as far as educating children, but it's not going to be perfect. You know, we met with our administrators um, last week to kind of kind of finalize what we want to do. Um, you know, but and I've charged them with you know approaching all of this with with a lot of patience and a lot of compassion for for what's going on with our children. Um, so basically, what we're doing, we've and our teachers have already reached out. There's a lot of stuff that's already been going on these last. You know, uh, two or three weeks with our with our teachers and our and our students, uh, kind of informally. Again, just trying to we've handed out a lot of what we call packets of information where they can do paper and pencil. So, um, as well as some online resources. Um, so, let, the hub of what we're doing is is located on our website. It's right there. You know, uh, www.wayne.k12.ga.us. That's that's where all of our information is, and right there in the middle of that page, you'll see a link that's um, you know labeled at home learning, and it's got all our resources right there. Um, that's where you'll be able to get it. It'll be updated again um, this Friday with with some suggested schedules for for parents and some and some new resources. That's where we've been putting things on really for the last you know three weeks. Um, so parents go there if you can. Now if you can't, um, we we've, we've got some. Again, paper and pencil packets is what we call them that that are available. And again, our our, our teachers are going to be reach, reaching out and, and giving some assignments, some things for students to continue doing. Um, but it's going to be really on the on the parents to make sure it gets done. I mean, that we're not going to be able to you know um, you know be there obviously. So we're just trying to give them some resources to kind of further this learning. And, and um, 
we've asked our teachers to make contact with their students each week. All right, that's we're formalizing that. That's an expectation. Um, parents and students, I mean, parents, if you have questions or comments, you know, don't hesitate to uh, send emails, make a call. We're expecting our um, we're still expecting all of our teachers and administrators to return calls within 24 hours. Um, they can use Kenvo, you know, telephone call, email. We're just trying to set up some communication. That's going to be the key to this thing, some, some communication. So teachers will be reaching out next week at the spring break and setting that up, how, whatever it looks like. That's the main thing. Um, teachers are going to be asked to, to post some assignments online. Um, these packets are like for several weeks, and it's not – I want to say this, you know, students, you know, whatever age, they're not expected to go sit down and work on their schoolwork for, you know, five, six, seven hours in a day. You know, an hour or two a day is plenty. You know, and they need to work on uh, other things. And we, some of the things that we do during the school day um, that are very, very important, staying healthy, staying engaged, you know, that social um, part is, is tough during this time but that's something that we can work on at house too that's what i've seen is, is parents are able to spend more time with their kids and, and do some things that that, are, that we're not able to do in this during the regular um daily life the first question of course is pe- some people don't have the right. technology to go online so for those residents that can't do that what do they do Right, and that's the hub of what we're saying. These these paper pencil packets that are available, they can be picked up uh, at the at the feeding sites. Um, and right now, we're doing it on the same days. We we may make them available and then come by and drive by uh, anytime. But right now, on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're handing those packets out um, <clears throat> at that time, so they can come by. Again, we're trying to set up that communication, and I understand you know Wayne County is a huge county. Um, square mileage wise so if somebody can't get it, if you'll just communicate that to the teacher we will figure that part out there's gonna be a lot, a lot of troubleshoot none of this is perfect I'm, I'm not i don't know how good it is it's the best we can do and, and I, that's gonna uh i'm comfortable with that you know our teachers are, are, are doing some you know there's some herculean efforts going on with uh with our teacher i couldn't be more proud of some of the things i've seen and um, they love our kids they want them to learn but again we're going to be limited in what we, we can get done and again it's it's something that we're trying to further along, um, and, I, and I'll get the grades, and that's you know everybody immediately goes to you know the grades and promotion, retention, graduation, that sort of thing. Right now, we just need to care for kids, um, give them some instruction, try to further along uh, the, the standards of, of instruction at the appropriate grade level, um, and, you know, for the next few weeks, and we'll figure out what the end of the school year looks like. Yeah, and those decisions will be made later. I've tried to stress during my newscast mm-hmm. several times that I talked to you, and with this lockdown to the end of the month, no decisions will be made until after that time because you don't really know how well, far this is going to go, and it's, everybody's you know, just sitting back waiting to see. Yeah, what and that's they need frustrating for people. People want to know what, what about graduation. Well, I hate to, to make plans or say we're going to do this when it's really not in our control okay we're not anything that we do can't supersede what the governor's going to say or the president's going to say and and to be honest with you our um city and county governments dictate things as well so it has to get to the school system level with our local board of education has to make those decisions right now it's not even close to really being in our hands so i hate to we're looking some, we're planning we're, we're we're holding out hopes that maybe we can do a you know a regular graduation outside um I just don't know how viable that is. I being being realistic, so we are studying some some things, um, you know, virtual graduations and some of these other things because we want to honor our seniors. You know, my heart breaks for those guys. Um, Ali, you know, you're talking about 300 children that have worked all of their lives at this point to to get to graduation. You know, they've already had spring sports and some of these events that they look forward to really all their lives, you know, that doesn't look like it's going to transpire. So we're going to do everything that we can um, to honor these folks. The, the community's doing some things now. There was, uh, you know, a good news story about you know, trying to honor some of our senior athletes that, you know, they just didn't get to finish their senior season, which is tragic. It's horrible, awful, um, nothing good about it. Um, but, we're, again, we're going to try to honor them the best way we can. And this all begins next week. So, is there one number to call if people have questions, or do they call each individual school? Or call, call the individual school. Uh, call so the individual people, school. There's people at the individual schools. Yes. If you ever have, have a question about what's going on, call the individual school. You know, it, our teachers and, and administrators are able to uh, check their voicemail um, from home. So, if you call the school, it, it, it transfers to 
whether the front office or if they, you have an extension, um, it'll be transferred there, and our administrators are expected to check those and kind of disseminate that. We're trying to stay within that 24-hour uh, return, but, you know, cut us a little little break. But if it doesn't, you give us a call at the county office as well at 427-1000. I ask you about a state story we had today. The Georgia State School Superintendent Richard Woods has already postponed the high-stakes testing indefinitely, but on Tuesday the office revealed that the 2020 test will never be given. These tests called known as milestones. Explain that. What what are they eliminating? Well, really the state has, a, has applied in for like – Several, many waivers, and they're still they have to be, have to be approved by the uh, the federal uh, Department of Education. And to this point, they've pretty much waived all of that. And, and like you said, the milestones, which is the part of the accountability um, measures that we have, each, that's been waived. So they're not even issuing that. And really, all the accountability measures, um, you know, that's dictate that to come down from the feds to the states it's you know come down to the local school systems has been waived as well you know you hear about um our evaluation system for administrators and teachers that's kind of waived there's a lot of things that's been waived um what i'm most concerned about is well one of the things i'm most concerned about is, is some of the uh, federal requirements as far as funding you know and he's applied for a lot of those wa- waivers he being superintendent richard woods and so we're, some of those are starting to filter down because the economic impact of this this situation is 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 very concerning. You know, I'm very concerned, and as as the whole state of Georgia, and not just in education, but all our um, you know businesses and uh, places that generate income. It's, right. it's 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 tough times. You know, with his social, just not got too much time on hand because things come through my mind. Like sure. Last night I was thinking that if I had a senior kid. You know, with everything they're losing. But the one thing I thought about last night, you know, one thing they have to do is they have to take these tests to qualify to get into colleges like SAT, you know. Yeah. They normally have those. What's going on with all that? Well, that's the SAT, that's been waived as well uh, going it's into – Yeah, that's been waived. Uh, now, one thing that's not been waived, but they've uh, – they're making other arrangements is like is our, our advanced placement uh, courses that were offered at high school, AP um, courses – they're they're offering online testing. That's something that is different. So our students are, are like again, our teachers are have continued working with a lot of our students and in that small group at the high school. Those teachers have made sure all their students, um, you know, have a device and have connectivity, and they're continuing that uh, instruction and learning, gearing up for that test because it is important. That uh, you know that that test for those that don't know, they're able to get college credit for that course if they make a you know, a three, four, five is how it's kind of graded. But um, so it is important. But we're continuing that. But SAT, for example, and even um, some of the other colleges, that it's called AccuPlacer, you know, kind of getting in college. That's been waived as well, and what from about, my understanding. And what about, you know, sc- Honors Night? This community gives so many scholarship monies that people have to apply for those. How is that taking yeah, place? We're, <coughs> excuse me, again, that's something we're, we're, we're looking at. And we're looking at um, – Again, holding out hope for, for maybe an outside graduation. I, I don't know how realistic that is at this point, but we're looking at virtual type things and, and graduation. We, we, maybe we do a hybrid of honor night graduation, um, or, or we may do two separate, you know, two separate type events virtually. Um, what that looks like, I don't know at this time. But we're we're studying, we're aware, and we 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 want to honor our our, so our all students. These dis- all so these discussions are taking place. Yeah, 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 of course. Like you know, every- there's. But <laughs> like like you're trying to stress, nothing's in your hands right now because everything's been shut down by yeah. the governor's executive order. Well, we have to be very mindful of, and look, there's a lot of ideas out there. I just, you know, we have 300 or plus graduates, um, and you think about graduation, we, we have close to close to uh, it's closer to 5,000 folks out there on a normal graduation night. Um, you know, it's close to 5,000 to 4,000. There's 4,000 seats out there at J.C. Stadium, and you, you know, it's pretty packed with a lot of other folks. Well, the standing room and we have, right, you yeah. know, we have basically almost 500 folks on the field with the graduation, you know, ceremony. So we we can't create that type of situation um, until until we have to go ahead that this, this virus is no longer a threat to, to people. And you, you see how complex it is. You see how the, the, the specialists, the experts have changed directions a little bit with this thing, and I think they're still studying still learning from it. Um, so we just can't do that. Um, a lot of ideas, you know, I thought it, it was a great idea to uh, have graduation at the drive-in where everybody pulls up in their car and that sort of thing. But when you start looking at the numbers, I mean, I'm just, I don't want to get in a situation uh, where – 
we're telling, all right, graduate, you can come to this place, but you can only bring two people with you, that sort of thing. We, we've been down that road, and that's just not a, that's, that's just not good. And in and, and gathering up, that's something I don't think our if, even if it is a local decision, I don't think our local governments are going to approve right. some of those things. So trying, anyway, we're trying to, to avoid large crowds, and that you know, that's right. the big issue right now. What about valedictorian, salutatorian? Will that be how will that be determined? Right. Well, we you know we, we had some discussions really before this uh, come about um, of kind of changing what we're doing when we name that. Um, and let me let me preface that and you're getting into grades and grade point averages. The governor himself, has, in his declaration, has said that, um, in, in regards to schools, is that this situation should have no adverse effects on students, um, grades, out, academic outcomes, that sort of thing. So that's that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to work with kids. We have students to, um, that they're maybe in, in danger of not getting credit for a course or. or um, not being promoted to the next grade, that sort of thing. Well, that's that's just this distance learning that we're trying. We're going to work hard to get those kids up where it doesn't adversely affect them going forward. We know um, that we're not going to be able to teach the standards to the level that we we would be able to do five days a week, uh, seeing them in 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 class. But we're going to do the best we can, and we'd have to you know fill in them that gaps going forward. Um, so we'll we'll kind of go back, revert back before we kind of dismissed back. Gosh, I can't remember the date, middle of March, um, and, and see where everybody was at that time, and we'll make those decisions, um, you know, accordingly. Hey, it was interesting. We had the story last week, you know, Georgia High School Association shut down everything as well after the governor's order, and they were getting bombarded with requests to have a extra year of eligibility for a senior athlete, and they said, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're going to move on. So, I mean, there's a lot of requests, a lot of asked questions, but – Unfortunately, you know, during this time, like I said, no one's going to be punished. They're just, but high school kids are simply going to move on. Seniors are going to graduate, move on to college. If you're 11th grader, you're going to move on to senior year. So that's just the way it's going to be done. And that's right. And that's that's the thing. And, you know, Georgia High School, we got our own opinions and relations with Georgia High, uh, uh, Georgia high School and uh, Dr. Robin Hines. But and I, I will take it for him in this instance. That, you know, that sounds good. And in college, I understand that they're doing that. But there's so many moving parts. That's just not. It's not reasonable to expect that he he can make that happen. That's right. that's, that's that's just not. Realistic. I was just surprised that he was getting. The, the, oh yeah. Read his press. Well, things he was getting bombarded sure. with that request. So. Yeah, it's tough being in a leadership role now. I couldn't imagine yeah. being the governor. Or we got any questions coming in, John? State, state no? level. Okay. Um, one thing I will say, and of course, events are starting to come. Um, but I, I will say today, you know, after the governor's announcement that. Um, and I've, I got to meet with Dr. McDaniel and, and folks. I've, I've spoken to him, but I'm gonna get with him uh, today and tomorrow. You know, but as far as a prom, you know, that's kind of the next event on there. And we, we we had rescheduled it, I think, for for May 2nd with the idea that possibly we were going back to school the 27th, I think it was, and, and we'd have a week to try to scramble and get things. We had the DJ and all, but I just don't see at this point uh, that the prom being being viable um, to have, you know, that type of thing. And so. You know, we'll probably look to, and again, we'll make the formal announcement to, today or tomorrow when I get to Dr. McDaniel and see if he's had any <laughs> epiphanies. We're all thinking about things. Uh, on spring break, these, these these folks are working hard on, on spring break um, to try to come up with it, but I don't see that going forward. I, what, I, what we don't want to do is have folks spending money on dresses and tuxedos and those types of things for this specific date, and us, here we are, we can cancel it the week of and, and so we'll probably postpone that indefinitely and if there's a way to get it in we will but um I, you know i don't know how realistic that expectation is at this point we want to make sure you emphasize that no decision on graduation has been made you know no. you have people hear this and they'll say yeah. no, J- no we want to make it clear that nothing's going to be decided until after the governor's I, executive order which goes correct to the we don't month. have control of it and right. i hate to say yes we're going to do it we're planning on doing it. if there's any way we can do it in a normal way yes we're going to do it even if we bump it back a couple of weeks and you know that's something we really need to involve our students in a little bit give them some input because once i'm, I'm just telling you how it flows once that school is out okay and everybody's already geared up school is out uh, may whatever 21st 22nd uh, whatever that date is they've already made plans we got kids going to going to college we got kids transitioning out going on senior trips and things like that um 
so they start to get scattered. Are we really going to exclude them from having a being part of the graduation ceremony, whatever it looks like? Um, I think we can go a couple of weeks later, um, but eventually there's a that's kind of a cutoff where we need to wrap this year up and get ready for next year. Um, you know, and folks need to get their diplomas. You know, believe it or not, uh, some entities want to see a a paper diploma. They don't care about a transcript. They want to see. You know, a diploma with the student's name on it, superintendent's name on it, chairman of the board, principal's name on it, that sort of thing. So. Again, you, let's go over again the online teaching that gets underway next week. Go ahead and go over those details once again. Right. Um, yeah, if you'll just go to our website, the teacher's going to be reaching out to you first and foremost, establish some, some communication to check in to support them, any questions, problems they're having with any of the work that is posted online on our website. Again, go to wayne.k12.ga.us. Uh, there's a link right in the middle of the page, At Home Learning. There will be some updates Friday with some, some, some new resources, also some su- suggested schedule for parents, you know, as far as, you know, you, know, you want to get into the routine. I don't sleep in the, you know, 11, 30, 12 o'clock <laughs> noon every morning. I don't know if that's the best schedule for kids. You want to get them, them up, uh, get something to eat, and maybe go ahead and get the schoolwork out of the way, and then the rest of the day c- they can do some other things. But um, go to our website. That's where all the information is going to be. Um, you know, if you don't have, if you have access, if you have connectivity but don't have a device, that's something that needs to be communicated to the, to the teacher. That's something we're going to try to troubleshoot and, and maybe try to get out some devices. We're not doing uh, a whole hog approach of just handing out uh, uh, Chromebooks. There's, 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 I know there's systems that's done that. There's also been problems with that. Um, but we will try to maybe do it on, on a small scale for folks. If you don't have connectivity, you don't have, um, you know, advice or connectivity. You don't need advice. You don't have connectivity. But um, we're ha- offering these paper pencil packets is what we're calling it that has assignments. They're on paper pencil. They'll be given out at the schools um, on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays along with our, our meals that we're, we're still serving. We'll pick that program back up next week. We're going to continue that f- in, until we're told we shouldn't do that. Um, and then they sh- in these paper these assignments, you certainly can submit them back in electronically if you have paper Pencil packets, hold on to them. Hold on to them until we get back into school. Don't worry about, um, you know, turning them in. Worry about what kind of grade I'm going to get. We'll get them turned in. We'll give you some feedback. Um, and that's what teachers are expected to do. We're not worried about grading on a 100-point scale at this time. We're worried about giving them some feedback, obviously, on, on any assignments submitted. Um, and then we'll work toward final grades, you know, uh, you know, a month from now. And in school, I've got a comment here. Website address. Someone wants to know what that is again, please. Yes, it's uh, www.wayne.k12.ga.us. And we had Bill Workheiser yesterday on the Butch and Bob show, and he talked about how they're going to have to go back and the budget they approved is going to be scrapped yeah. and go start from scratch. You know, I'm sure that's something too early for you to understand but but i'm sure the school system's going to be the same situation what kind of economic impact will this have on the school system it's um you know i don't hate to be doom and gloom but i i just if you if we're not making plans uh for some some impact to to the funding k-12 funding and we're 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 not doing the right thing so we're doing that we're planning uh to look at some things we might have to pump the brakes on on you know, some things we've been, again, we're trying to improve what we're doing, trying to take care of our folks. Um, but we got to take care of all of them. You know, we can't, I don't know if we're going to be at liberty. I don't, I, I think the thousand dollar raise, you can forget that. You can really kind of, I'll be very surprised if we don't get some QB cuts from our, for our allotments. And, you know, I'm here already hearing 20, 25 percent, which is, which is tremendous. So that's something we're going to have to look at, uh, you know, rolling up our sleeves and digging in and seeing where we can make plans. We don't want to go back to the days of furloughs and 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 uh, not be, just telling teachers to stay at the house or all of our employees to stay at the house and, and not just because of our teachers, educators. That's that's our responsibility. But the school system, you know, is a uh, is a big player in our community as far as our tax digest, as far as co- contributing to our you know our local economy. So when we have teachers stay at the house for 10 days that's that's a pretty big impact on our digest which, which affects the whole county so we're going we're going to we're going to be very uh, we have to rethink a lot of things going forward and again we don't have a lot of information at all they're not back in session we don't know um i think that's coming soon but this thing's it's gonna there's gonna be effects for years to come not just next year 
um, but probably two or three more after that. It's going to be interesting how everything, uh, when it does get back to some type of routine and see what changes are taking, you know, they changed after 9-11. I'm sure it's going to change yeah. after this. But right now the main thing is to stress the governor's executive order to stay safe. Like he said yesterday, don't relax at yeah, this time. That's right. you know, put your foot on the brake. Or not to put your foot on the brake, to put on the accelerator and keep on doing the social distancing, avoid large gatherings, and you know, just try to stay safe. So yeah, and everything that's, will work it out after that. But right now, we just got to get over this. That's right. Tough time. And that's and that's something we, we're trying to strike a balance with distance learning. We want to, uh, you know, stay true to our responsibility, of educating kids. But this distance learning should not be an added stress to the parents. All right, not an added stress to the to the students in, in any way whatsoever. That's that's we need to take care of our folks right now. That so don't worry about uh, are all those answers, you know, correct. The teacher will be working to give you some feed, give you some feedback, that sort of thing. But this is strictly for kids at the house. They need to be doing something, okay. And, and so parents, if you'll help us facilitate what we're sending home or what they're able to do online and, and help with the schedule and. Again, like I said, we're going to send home some examples. That there are suggestions. You know, you you run your household how you run your household, but we're just trying to support what's going on and, again, continue the learning that we have with our students. And, again, I uh, just want to commend. We had Randy on the show either this week or last week talking about the food service program. I think we had this week. Uh, mm-hmm. She called in Monday where, you know, it's not taking place this week because it's normal spring break week for Wayne right. County schools, but it picks back up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that, that program is definitely needed. and. Again, hats off to her and her staff for everything they do on those Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's amazing. I mean, yeah. if you haven't seen it in person, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just an amazing uh, organization and production. But it's something that's definitely needed in the community. It is. And those those, those ladies and, and gentlemen that have worked hard, our food nutrition folks, they're, I mean, they're giving out thousands of meals, thousands, you know, uh, of meals already given out thousands gonna give out thousands more like i said we're, we're going to continue this to the end of the school year we'll uh you know we, we're took, taking a break this this week really for a couple of reasons we did have a, a regular scheduled spring break but we we needed to replenish the food coffers a little bit and uh and really our workers need a little break too that they are there that's a lot of work it's a lot of work to get those uh bags and everything ready where the people were driving through and we we're able to just hand it through their the window and they got you know four six meals in that bag um so i can't say enough about about their efforts there's still a lot of people working too i mean the fields are shut down but the maintenance staff i see still out there maintaining those fields maintaining facilities and make sure everything's you know right we're trying you know we're just trying to keep the you know doors open kind of keep some things going on again um <clears throat> our folks in Wayne County, that's what that's what we do. We we do whatever's necessary to kind of keep it going. And there's things we can do, and we're trying to get ahead of some things for the future and um, get ready for next year when this thing passes. Okay. Well, hopefully, like I said, the executive order of the governor goes the end of the month, but hopefully after that, you know, things will open up and maybe decisions will be made on things like graduation, as you mentioned, but yeah. no decision, just to emphasize that before you leave, no decision yeah. has been made. Nothing is in no. your hands until the executive order is over by the state. That, that's correct. I mean, it's not in not our hand. We can't we can't do anything in, in, until they say we can. And, again, it's you're looking at uh, federal, state, and local officials have to kind of – they're going to have to bless and be okay with what we're doing. Um, and I don't mind saying today that I, that I think some kind of virtual type – graduation is probably likely i I just i mean i don't think we can go into july still trying to have a graduation for our 2020 seniors i don't think that's the the thing to do and um eventually there there comes a cutoff time where we got to get ready for the next school year and 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 move on but we certainly want to honor our seniors to the best of our ability okay jay again always a pleasure appreciate you coming in again good information give the website one more time that you know and the the numbers to call or the schools yeah that's uh yeah our website again is www.wayne.k12.ga.us and that's the hub of all our information there's a link right there for that home learning right in the middle of the page but again uh, anybody can call the schools there's not, not, not nobody's there this week but if you'll leave a message folks somebody will get back to you um, otherwise call the Wayne County Board of Education at 427-1000 that director you can leave a message there with any any director or or uh 
my assistant Renee Heron, and we I will give you a call back myself if I need to. But don't uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you need any support or need materials or um, you know we're still trying to make sure everybody's getting food too. So we're we're not we hadn't ruled out we're not running buses. There's things you know we want to create situations trying to do good things. I'm not we're not afraid to run buses, um, but you know again with some assistants have run buses and have drop off points. And they're now they're seeing well I'm driving a bus up here and I got 30 people ganged up around the bus getting getting meals and getting packets and those sorts of things well you're 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 outside the social distancing guidelines and it's not safe and uh, brantley county is one of those that superintendent over there who's who does a tremendous job she's started off doing that and they're fixing to change what they're doing because she feels like it's not safe so kudos to her but that's that's you know we're just going to troubleshoot it's not perfect if somebody needs something please reach out to us and let us know okay yeah appreciate you coming in uh just one time Final note, tomorrow's Pitch and Bob show, we've got Doug Collins, the yes. candidate for state senate, going to call us tomorrow, so we'll look forward to talking to him. But, again, uh, as we mentioned before in the news, this is Easter week. We yeah. do want to wish everybody out there, uh, you know, a happy Easter. I know it's going to be a tough time for a lot of people, but, again, hats off to most of the churches. They've got online services, so, you know, very special week here. But we do want to wish everybody out there a uh, happy Easter. But, again, encourage everybody to – Follow the guidelines, stay safe. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. And that's going to do it for today's Butch okay. and Bob Show. Well, the famous Butch and Bob Show on WIFO brought to you this morning by Murphy Builder Supply and Nips Car Wash. 827 here at the Big Dog WIFO. Good morning. Our customers comes first at First Franklin Financial. It's not just a slogan, it's the way we do business. Since 1941, we've been helping our friends and neighbors in the Southeast with their financial needs. We offer personal loans, bill consolidation loans, and more. So stop by our office today. We're conveniently located at 1074 North Macon Street or give us a call at 912-427-4237. You can also start your application online at www.1ffc.com. All long-term applications.